Hello, my name is Chris and I'm from Daily Dose of DIY. It is my mission to teach you how to conquer your Cricut cutting machine so you can make great things. Today I'm going to show you how to make a vinyl stencil with your Cricut and paint a sign. By the end of this video you'll have all my tips and tricks for painting a perfect sign every time. So, so to get started we're going to need our vinyl stencil. I use Oracle stencil vinyl. Um, transfer paper, which I use just clear contact paper you can get from Walmart. Our Cricut tools, a board that you're going to stencil on, our cut mat, some paint and a brush, and some Mod Podge. And I will link all these down below so you can see what I'm using. Next we're going to go into design space so I can show you the easiest way to make and design a stencil. Let's head over there. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this with both an SVG you can upload from the internet or design your own in design space with your text and stuff. So you can use my SVG for free. I'm going to show you how to get that go over to my website and of course I'll link this down below. I keep all my free SVGs in the library. So if you're not already a member it's free to join. Just enter your first name and your email. Hit subscribe and you'll get to the password and the link to get into the library. So once you have that you just have to enter the resource library. Let's see I need to enter my password real quick. And then once it lets you in, my SVG files are all in alphabetical order. So the one I'm using today is called Blessed Beyond Measure. Once you click on the link, if you're in a Chrome browser, you'll automatically see it downloading down at the bottom. If you don't have a Chrome browser, check your downloads folder. Look for the file name Blessed Beyond Measure. So once it's done downloading, you can open it. I'm on a Mac. So it's automatically going to unzip it. It is in a zipped file. If you're on a PC, you might need to right click and then click extract all to get the SVG file unzipped. So once it's unzipped, you'll see it in your downloads folder. It's ready to go. I can go ahead and close this. We're going to go back to design space and click upload. And then we want to upload image and browse. Again, the file is called Blessed Beyond Measure, so let's go look for our Bs. Find that file that ends in .svg, click on it, and then click Open. Here is our preview of that file. You can go ahead and give it tags if you want to to remember how to find it. Click the Save button. We get the success, the vector image was uploaded, so go ahead and click on it, and then at the bottom right screen, you're going to click Insert Images. And that will bring it into Design Space for us. So this is what I want on my stencil. Now to make the stencil, we're going to go over here. So first, I think I'm going to come over to the Layers menu on the right. And that little eyeball you see, if you click on that, it will make that SVG we just uploaded disappear off the canvas. It's still loaded in here we can use, but it gets it out of the way for us so we can see the rest of our design. So to make a stencil, we're just going to come over to Shapes and we're going to select a square. I'm going to go to the top menu and change the color right here from that dark gray it is to a blue. There's no reason to do that other than our, our stencil material is blue so it helps me just see what we're doing especially once we get the text. Go to the bottom left of your square and click the unlock button. This will allow us to stretch it out and not keep it perfectly square. So what we want to do, my board, I pre-measured it, 
It is 11 inches long and it's five and a half inches up and down high. That's the word I was looking for. So 11 inches long, five and a half inches high. We want to make this rectangle the same size that your board is going to be. This is going to be our stencil. So we can go ahead and go to the top. If you see about the middle of the um, menu bar on the top is where I'm at, where it says size, width. We're gonna go ahead and change that to 11.00. And then right over here on height, we're going to change it to 5.5 .5, and then hit enter. That changes our rectangle to be 11 inches wide by 5.5 inches high. The exact same size as our board. Now, if we come back over to the layers menu, which is on the right, we're going to click that eyeball again so we can see our design. As you can see, it comes behind that blue rectangle and we want it to be in front. So while that is still selected, we're gonna go back to the top menu and we're going to click where it says arrange right up here and send to the front. And that will bring that design into the front. Place it over your blue rectangle and then we're going to select both so I go up to the top corner up here hit down my left mouse key and drag across both of them so it selects both of them I'm going to go back to the top where it says align click that down arrow and go all the way down to the bottom of that menu and center it perfectly and that will make the design centered into the stencil while everything is selected, our last step, we're going to go over to the layers menu again. At the very, very bottom, you'll see the word attach. We're going to click attach. Now, you'll see the letters change to just an outline. Everything is blue now, except for that black outline of the letters, and that's perfect. That's all you have to do. It's ready to cut. Come over here and click the make it button. It will show you how everything uh, lines up on the mat so we can get our vinyl cut and on our mat. And next up, we're going to go ahead and get the vinyl on our cut mat and get our Cricut cutting so we can get this stencil done. We needed our vinyl to be 11 inches wide. I need it to be about 6 inches long. I'm using Aura Mask 813 Stencil Film by Oracle. It is my favorite brand. Let's go ahead and remove the film from the cut mat. This is just the green standard cut mat from Cricut. And then I line up, flip this around, on the top left corner. Smooth it down. So we're going to turn on our Cricut machine. If you have a Cricut maker, you will choose stencil vinyl from the menu on Design Space. If you have an Explore machine, you're going to set your dial right on your machine to vinyl. Or you could also go into custom settings and choose the stencil vinyl. I find it cuts the same. When you're ready, you're going to load your mat, stick them under the little tabs, hit the load button, and then when the go button starts flashing, hit it and it will cut our stencil for us. It is finished cutting, so I'm going to go ahead and click the unload mat button. When we take our project off the mat, you want to make sure you always remember to flip it over and remove your mat from the project. It will help reduce curl. So I'm just going to toss my mat to the side for now and put the paper back on it. Now we are ready to weed our stencil. I use the Cricut hook in the 
little kit. I'll link you down below. So you remember that rectangle we made? That is going to be cut on here. Of course it's hard. I'll try stabbing it. I guess that's why the tools come in handy. So there's our rectangle. It's the same size as our board. And then for a stencil, you pull the letters out, right? So we want to leave a hole where the letters are. And we re remember to leave the centers of the letters in there. Usually once you get it started, it just all pulls off really nice and smooth like that. Make sure it doesn't, like I said, doesn't catch the center of your letter and pull that out too. So we pull the letters out, leave the centers in. And this is, of course, where we paint. So it's kind of the opposite of making a vinyl decal. So now that our stencils weeded, we're ready to attach our transfer paper. I use regular clear contact paper from Walmart. Here is my trick for getting it on smoothly. I get it started, which again is sometimes a pain. There we go. And pull one end and then fold it the paper backwards just for a little section. And then stick it to the end of what I want to transfer. And then you can either just use your hand or your scrape tool if you want for this. But at the same time as I'm pulling off the backing, I'm going to go down. Um, actually, it looks like I'm going to move that down a little bit or we won't have enough. Okay, there we go. At the same time that I pull off the backing, I'm going to go down the center so it goes down nice and smooth. Like in one swoop. And then once it's on there, you can go ahead and use your scraper tool and burnish it really well. In that, I lost the center of my A. You see that? It's right here. Those centers can be tricky. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and see if I can position it back on there now. Yep, that worked. Okay, then I can lay that back down. It's in there. You scrape it down really good to make sure those pieces of vinyl stick to your transfer tape. Now here's the beauty of making your stencil the same size as your wood. We're ready to transfer it to our wood now. Is you can line it up and it will help you, your wording and everything will automatically be centered and it just helps you keep everything straight. So I put the stencil on much the same way I do transfer paper. Start one end and then we can line up the edges with our board so that we are sure it is going on nice and straight and square. Now when you peel the backing off here you want to go nice and slow and make sure all those bits stuck to your transfer tape. So I just go a little bit at a time and then smooth down. Like those centers of the B and stuff, you want to make sure they are still there. Oh, there's a part that's not wanting to come loose. There we go. Looks like everything else is going to go fine and we get to the end and it matches up pretty closely to the size of our board. Then we burnish again 
because we want to make sure now that the stencil sticks to the board and not our transfer tape, right? So give it a good go and then we start to pull up our transfer tape. Go kind of slow. There's a part that's stuck to make sure everything's going to stick to the board this time. There's that pesky A. Try with my fingernail. Still doesn't want to work. If you have one that's a problem, I like to use my tool. You just Pull it off the tape and then hold it onto the board while you lift the tape away. I think he's going to need repositioned anyway. Let's see if we can get the rest off. Yep, it's all off. Okay, let's see if we can work on him. Oh. That's good. And it's that easy. Your stencil's on there and it's going to be centered to your board and it's going to look beautiful. Now I want to give you some tips and tricks um, to get it painted perfectly because we don't want stencils to bleed and pull up paint and we've come this far. We don't want it to look like crap now. So my first tip is to seal your stencil, especially if you have rough or bumpy wood. You can do this either with the background color of paint. You can paint over your stencil first with the color you painted the background. Um, the main color of my background is teal, but I had two other colors on it to make it look distressed. So that's not going to work for me. Or if you do something like stain your background, you don't want to put stain on top. But if you just have a solid color background, it would work to paint now the same color as your background. Any paint that's going to bleed will blend in with the background, right? And it will seal your stencil. Um, like I said, if you used stain or you have a multicolored background, just throwing my stuff around here, you'll want to use Mod Podge as your sealer. I use matte. Um, here's the thing with Mod Podge though have to grab me another brush. You can't put it on very thick or if you do when you pull off your stencil the letters will come too. If that makes sense. It will pull up what you just painted for your letters. It has everything you do in stencils just has to be thin thin layers. Okay? And when I say thin I mean really thin. Like you're probably Scrape off that extra. Mine's leaking onto my hand. I'm a messy crafter. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty messy. It's dripping all over my table. Yay! Very, very thin. Like you can probably barely even see this. It's a translucent sealer. You definitely don't want to see white or anything building up. You just want to do a thin, very quick over your letters. To get it to seal. That way if there's any parts of your stencil that are not laying flat against your wood, it will not bleed when you paint. So that's done quickly and since it's so thin, it's going to dry in no time flat. Probably going to pause the video because I doubt you want to sit here and watch Mod Podge dry. But it will take no time, I promise you. I'll be right back as soon as it's ready to go. Okay, so we're back and this is just dry now. It took all of two minutes, but we're ready to paint. I'm using Coconut Cream by Treasures by the Sea. Of course, I'll link that down below. It's going to give it a good shake 
mix it up. Now, just because we sealed our stencil, doesn't mean you still want to come along and glob on a bunch of paint. You still want to do pretty thin coat here. And just let it build up. Now the thing I like about sea paint is it dries so incredibly fast. By the time I get from one end to the other, the first part is already going to be dried. my coats on my stencil while it's finishing up drying here I'm going to give you my next tips for getting a stencil off without peeling up your base coat of paint and the first thing starts before you even paint that base coat you need your board to be clean if you have sawdust on it like that paint is not going to stick to it very good and if your base coat doesn't stick to the board it's going to come up when you pull off that stencil so use cheesecloth or microfiber cloth or your fingers. <laughs> a microfiber cloth would be ideal. But get that dust and that dirt and grease and stuff, oils from your finger, they're all fighting against you to get that base coat to stick. So the cleaner you can start with a board, if you can get a bit of light um, sanding real quick to get off those oils and grease, take a microfiber cloth, wipe it down to get the sawdust off, then you're starting with um, a good place for your paint to stick to. So once your paint base coat dries, you also want to give it enough time, to, your base coat enough time to dry. Once it's completely dry, then you can lay down your stencil. And then the last trick to not to getting your paint to peel up is in removing the stencil. The grain of wood usually goes a long ways with the board, so the grain wood grain is going this way for this stencil and most people would rip the stencil off that way right because it's easiest um, but if you rip it off with the grain of wood you're more likely to get those paint peels so if you go against the grain of wood you're less likely to get paint peels does that make sense so the grain of wood is going that way I'm gonna peel my stencil off that way and we're just gonna start at the bottom and start lifting in that direction. Once you get the majority of the background done, then you can use this pick. Another area you want to be careful with is digging into your wood. Just try to get under the stencil and peel it off enough that you can grab a hold. If you poke into the wood, then you're going to leave a, a mark too. So we'll get these pulled up and we'll take a look at our finished product. So there you have it. Our sign is done. As you can see, there's my camera. As you can see, it's beautiful without any bleeds. These tips work just about every time to get a great painted sign. Stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to show you how to frame signs if you'd like a wooden sign. And I thank you so much for watching this one. If you're not already a member of the DIY tribe, hit that subscribe button. I'll teach you how to conquer your cricket and make some pretty great things like this sign. Thanks again.